nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. How does digitization change the way we work, communicate, buy, or produce things? How can we take advantage of an increasingly digitized world? In what way can enterprises react to increasingly diversified customer demands? Why is digitization a chance for the industrial evolution? Digitalization changes everything. It changes everything in our daily lives. It changes the way how we read books, how we listen to music, how we communicate and how we travel. And it even changes the way how we get to know our partners very often through the internet these days. On the other side, it also changes the way how we do business. Digitalization is an opportunity for the ones who embrace it, and it's a risk for the ones that stay behind. Digitalization is not a topic that's there on its own and serves an own purpose. It has to fit and meet business requirements. The first requirement is time to market. Products need to get out in the market faster and faster. It needs to meet the requirements of flexibility because products are getting produced in a more and more individualized way. Cars are being built in one million configurations sometimes. And even sneakers are being produced in the past as mass products. Today, they're being produced according to the requirements and the design wishes of an individual consumer. Quality is an important topic. And of course, efficiency, because we live in a competitive world, and cost and cost efficiency is a topic to stay competitive and be ahead of the pack. In order to achieve all this and meet these four requirements that are very, very prominent in the business field, we need to look at the whole value chain from beginning to end in a holistic way. And Siemens provides Digital Enterprise Suite, which is the solution portfolio consisting of automation and software that supports the whole value chain of any company from product design through production planning production engineering, production execution, and services. That's the whole chain we need to look at. And it's being supported and done on the basis of the collaboration platform Team Center, which is the platform that provides data for anyone in the company at any given point in time in a very, very consistent way. And the second uh, operating system or platform that is being required is MindSphere, which is this system that takes data from production execution and from services into the cloud, analyzes them, and feeds them back into both production and product design in order to have a continuous loop of improvement throughout the product lifecycle value chain at any given company, regardless whether it's a small company, a medium-sized company, or a big company. Let's go through these individual five steps of the value chain in a greater level of detail in order, in order to understand what is going on there. We start with a product design. And what usually happens is that in Team Center, which is the collaboration platform that I talked about, the requirement spec of the product is being stored. And now the designer, whether it's a mechanical designer or a designer that uh, that designs electronics or software in a product or a whole system, takes these requirements and forms the first system, designs the first product. And that results in a digital twin of the product. What we would have been doing in the past is then with this first design of the product, develop a prototype and build a prototype. That takes a lot of time, that is tedious, you can't do that too often, maybe three times, maybe four times. But what we can do now in the digital world is we take the digital twin of the product and we simulate its properties. And if we find out, for example, heat dissipation, for example, mechanical stress, for example, functioning of software or of electronics, and if we find out that the design doesn't work, 
we go back to the drawing board into the design phase and we redesign. And then we simulate again and redesign and simulate. And we can do that as often as we want in order to get to the perfect design of a product. The final stage of this step is the digital twin of the product that is now close to the final design. Then we build the prototype and then we verify the design in order to make sure that it's actually what we need and that we really want to get into production with. Talking about production, that's the next step. Production and production design and production planning and product are two sides of a single coin. And now we go to the second step of production planning. What we need to do there is quite similar to the product design. We take the digital tool in the digital world and we design in the virtual world the production facility, the individual workspace, the whole factory. We can even walk through the factory in order to understand how the geometry of the factory environment looks like and whether the ergonomics of the factory environment actually work. We can simulate manual labor, human labor. We can simulate robots. We can simulate whole factories with material flow, timing that is being required in order to produce the products. We can simulate buffers. We can simulate capacity shortages so that at the end, we have a design first and then a simulation. And again, we go through the circle of design and simulation, check a few options, and then end up with the most promising one which is then optimized according to the requirements of the production and, of course, to the requirements of the marketing department that tell you how many devices you have to build. So at the end of this process, we have a digital twin of the production environment, of the factory, and of the production line. And then you're quite sure that whatever has been put together is going to work and that the investment that's going to be put into the production facility will serve the purpose. Now we have the digital twin of the product and the digital twin of the production. Now we need to engineer the production line and we need to go into the third step of detailing whatever has been designed on the production side before. We need to take the details of the automation equipment, the semantic, the cinomeric. We need to take the details of the drives. We need to take the details of the HMIs, that's the monitors that are next to the machines and to the lines. We need to take the details of the switch gear, of the electric connections, and the details of safety equipment and engineer the whole production line to the fullest detail. And we also do this in the digital world before we build anything. And then there's a second topic that we need to do in that step, which is taking and generating the PLC code of the manufacturing facility. A PLC code is this software that tells the automation devices in the production environment what to produce, how to behave, how to move, and what to do. In the past, this code was a work that took months and months and was manual coding that had to be done, was error prone, and of course, it was tedious and took a long time. Today in the digital world, we can derive the PLC code out of the digital twin of the product and the digital twin of the production in an automatic way. So it's automatically derived. And then in the last step, we can then even virtually commission the production line by letting the digital twin of the automation and the digital twin of the production line that you've just seen interact and verify that the code actually works and that everything goes to perfection. And only then we start with step number four, which is the implementation of the manufacturing line in the real world, and then subsequently the actual production. As you can see it here in the picture with cars, with a ship filling off shampoo or in the pharmaceutical industry, it is all alike. We have the production running now. The bill of process and the electronic work instruction 
is being fed into the manufacturing um, operation system in the MES in the factory and that further distributes the PLC code and all the data that are required into the manufacturing environment, into the single machines and the individual workspaces. The product is being generated and being built and then at the end of the day it comes out of the production and what the manufacturing execution system does, the MES does, it takes the data out of the production, checks the quality, documents the quality and feeds the data back into Team Center, into the database for the whole factory in order to make sure that the as-built information is there so we have a digital feedback loop that provides the data then for later services activities. Now, the production is done and we can go to the very next step, which is the services step. Because what we have now is we have a product out there in the field. Let it be a car, let it be a ship, let it be an intelligent building, let it be a train that can all be connected to the Internet of Things, can all be connected into the cloud. The production system can also be connected to the cloud. So we connect both of these systems into the cloud. They create a massive amount of data and this data can be stored in the cloud, can be attached with an application that analyzes the data and gets the business essence out of these massive amount of data that we have. And with this business essence, because data is not enough, we need to understand what's behind it, we can do two things. The first thing is that we can use the data to optimize the operations of the production line. Or we can optimize the operations of the car that is driving around in terms of preventative maintenance to tell the customer that only after a couple of months you need to maintain your car, but maintain it whenever something tends to be broken or is being worn or torn and just before braking. And we can do the same with machines and that increases the uptime of both the product and the production. The second thing that we can do is we can connect the statistical data coming out of MindSphere, which is a digital performance twin with a product digital twin and the production digital twin. And through this feedback circle and loop, we can optimize both product and production continuously, and that gives us the powerful circle of the holistic approach from product design through services and back. And that's a never-ending cycle of productivity increase and of product performance increase. That's the principle, and that's the way how we're dealing with our holistic approach where Siemens supports all these five steps and the feedback loop through the digital enterprise suite. What's the conclusion? We see that this is an extremely powerful approach where companies like Maserati reduce their R&D time for new cars by 30% and are getting three times more cars out of the factory than ever before. At our factory in Einberg, we're using this approach in order to increase the output by a factor of 10 between 1990 and today with a quality level of 99.9989% delivering each and every second a product out of the factory. That gives you a view on the great and powerful approach that digitalization takes along. I hope this tells everyone, digitalization is the way to go. One needs to take a holistic approach from beginning to end in order to make sure that all the benefits are being reaped and that the company is being leapfrogged through digitalization. And the third point is, we as Siemens are supporting the full approach and the full value chain from beginning of end, being a partner for all of our customers on the way to becoming and transforming into a digital company.